I told you a little bit about 1988. Uh, I couldn't remember if this slide was in here. Here's some of the things. Ah, to be 1988 again. That's what that says. The first thing I did was in 1988, after attending my first benchmarking session, and, and uh, it was so eye-opening for me, I put my controller and my operations manager on an airplane, and I, went, and I sent them to two other facilities in the United States, completely different parts, and because I wanted to understand. I mean, you're like beating your head against the wall, and you, you hear people making more money, but you don't know why. You don't know what you don't know. It's one of my favorite sayings. You're working in a vacuum. All you know is what you know. You can't know what you don't know. And when they went to the other facilities, it was like, oh my God, look how they do this. We knocked a huge hole in the wall for the way we filled orders. And just about everybody in this room started the same way I did. You had a little bitty dump of a building, and you had very few employees, and then you added on, and then you added on, and then you added on, and then you moved and bought some more land and added on the back, and then you added on a little more, and you just scabbed on and scabbed on, and you never really blew it up and reinvented it. And if you stop and think about it, what worked with 100,000 in sales can't be the same as what works with 500,000 in sales in a month. So I sent them away and they came back and they, you just wouldn't believe the ideas they brought back. But we just did so many things as a result of that one little visit by going and looking at our peers' place. We were the first, Ed Lacey was the first. He bought one of those little funny Japanese trucks is what he called it with the box on the back. It, was, it would have been an Isuzu NPR, I think. And he, he put the big, huge lift gate, and he brought it to the meeting. And, and by the way, we saw in his metrics because he was getting more deliveries than everybody else. How could that be? We're all working our butt off, and why are you doing, oh, well, look here. Here's our trucks. This is what we did. So everybody in the room bought big, you know, today we all know about the box trucks. But we didn't know what we didn't know until Ed said, you know, I wonder if those box trucks would help us deliver, and I wonder if our customers would be happier if we could actually unload their dishwashers for them. Warranties? Warranties were unheard of. Of course, in the 80s, every salesperson made a thousand bucks in cash every week. That's the way it was. Today, it's commissions, and a lot, a lot of places still not, don't have their salespeople on commission. If you're not paying commissions, and I don't mean a salary plus 1%. Nobody's going to stay 30 minutes extra to make sure a guy gets a, picks up an engine coming from out of town to get 1% of a $500 engine. They're not going to do it. Most of the places are paying straight commission now, the most successful places. And I can give you the metric here. When I sold a Ford, we were paying about 8%. And then we lowered it to 7 And then Ford told me they were going to lower it to 6 And I told them half the people were going to leave. And they lowered it to 6 and nobody left, and everybody, all of the sales came up, and I couldn't believe it. Today it's about 5%. Uh, LKQ ranges from 4.5 to 5.5, I think, and so does Greenleaf. Well, Greenleaf's part of Ford now. But I know a lot of other yards. I still know some yards that are paying as much as 7%. So look at what your salespeople are doing and think about it. And there's a huge opportunity here because as soon as you put them on straight commission, the first thing that's going to happen is the air is going to get so thick you can cut it. And the second thing that's going to happen is the sales are going to go up for the best salespeople and the other people are going to leave and you're going to be okay. When he came and called on me in 86 or whatever year it was, and we had six salespeople, we were doing, had 28 employees, we, had, we were doing 100,000 a month, he said, you got too many salespeople. I said, look at these phones. Who's going to answer these phones? This is going to be crazy. Of course, we didn't have electronic phones. We had those old kind where we had to holler at each other and push the buttons on the bottom row. And uh, we put everybody on commission, and we had never sold over 100. We were averaging 100, and we went to 143,000 the next month. Couldn't believe it. And in 90 days, we went to 200,000, and we lost two people. So we, had, we went from six people doing 100 to four people doing 200 in 90 days. And the air was thick enough to cut. I was the biggest ass that had ever walked on the face of the earth. Commissions, pay for performance. We paid our drivers. We paid our parts pullers. Virtually everybody got paid for what they did. Buying in the innovations, the way we bought cars, and the, the people in the group would exchange information on the way they bought cars. It was powerful, an extremely powerful 